All right, it's time once again for another edition of the Locked On Utah Hockey Club podcast. Tom Callahan, Robin Leano here with you. A lot of you have been talking to us about defense. So we are going to look at some trade targets on the defensive market. But before that happens, there's a game Monday, which is a little unusual. But the San Jose Sharks coming to town, little mini two-game homestand. Robin and I are going to talk about that and more coming up next. You are Locked On Utah Hockey Club, your daily podcast on the Utah Hockey Club, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And thank you so much for making us your first listen each and every day when it comes to the Utah Hockey Club. Robin and I are here. We're working our tails off to bring you the best access commentary Everything we can think of, we're going to throw out some weird stuff from time to time just to keep you on your toes. But no, seriously, we love the sport of hockey, and we hope that love translates over to what we do, and it helps you to grow into your fandom as well. So thanks for making us your first listen every day. Right now, I know there's a bunch of other shows that you might want to check out, but I would suggest heading over to the Fantasy Hockey Show right now, because I know those guys are talking about some early season pickups. Some of you have come out of the gate slowly. Some of me have come out of the gate slowly and might be looking for some help, just like Utah is on defense. So just a thought, if you want to check out some of the other shows, uh, check out the Fantasy Hockey Show. They're doing a great job. Today's episode brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONNHL for $20 off your first purchase. Robin, we, uh, we, meaning Utah Hockey Club, we, the Royal we, uh, three-game losing streak. Mm-hmm. San Jose Sharks coming into town on Monday, uh, not scoring goals, defensively a little suspect right now. Effort was up and down this week, certainly better last time out. But um, is it too early to label this a critical stretch for this hockey team right now with the Sharks coming in Monday? Is this a must-win game already? Honestly, I think I think we're at this point where you can consider it a must-win game in the sense where this is, this is what I think, Tom, I think is the – an opportunity game for them. And it's an opportunity for them to bounce back. You talk, you said it. They're on a three game losing streak. Utah on this three game losing streak. We didn't expect kind of the, the hurdles that we, that we, that we experienced in the last couple of weeks. Utah's seen it, seen quite a lot of it. Um, after having quite an awesome start to the season, that first, that first three games was absolutely amazing. And then things start kind of, crash down a little bit. It's like, okay, let's come back down to reality. But it even got worse. So a game against a game like today, we were talking uh, that when everyone's listening to this against the San Jose Sharks, who still have yet to win a single game. Oh, seven and two has to be an opportunity for the Utah hockey club. By the way, it's, it's historical badness now for the Sharks. I think, <sighs> It's either the first team to lose at least seven in a row to start a year or be winless seven in a row, or maybe it's nine in a row it's, to start a back-to-back yeah, year. Yeah, the first to go, I think they lost their first nine games in back-to-back in the back-to-back seasons. Like, yeah, it's not good. And it doesn't what doesn't help too? And I and and I'll, and I'll mention this too, that they're you know they're still a guy that they were hoping to have a, to make a really big impact is out with an injury, Macron Celebrini. So it's <laughs> uh, it's. You know, I, I think for, you know, for Utah, it's the, the injuries that they have. Yeah, it makes an impact. But for 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 San Jose, they're they're feeling it, too. They're feeling their in, injury bug. Opportunity is definitely knocking in this Sharks game for Utah. Number one, coming back home. Uh, number two, the Sharks haven't won yet, haven't really shown that they can either put pucks in or keep them out of their net. Uh, they're they're struggling. And as you mentioned, Really, the guy I think that Utah fans would have wanted to see most, Macklin Celebrini, is not day to day, but week to week yeah. with uh, with his injury. So, you know, number one overall pick, a lot of excitement around him. Well, we're going to have to wait to be excited. Uh, also, uh, Ty Delandria will not play on Monday, out day to day with an upper body injury. So, Will Smith will go uh, for the Sharks and uh, Giovanni Smith will come in for Delandria. So that's how it looks like the Sharks are going to attack this one. But what it's done is it's changed that top line into uh, Eklund Granlund and Tyler Toffoli. 
Toffoli is a guy. I actually really like Toffoli. He is a gray yeah. beard for sure. Been around, but he's that guy that he always seems to go in and help a team to do better than they really should. Um, he was a key to that. Remember that Canadian Stanley Cup, uh, unlikely Stanley Cup final run in the bubble? Uh, Toffoli was a big part of that. So uh, he's he's that guy. And uh, having him on your team is good. You can always find a way to win games if you can just find a way to keep pucks out of your net. And I will say this, okay? Tuesday wasn't great uh, for for Utah Hockey Club. Thursday was bad. Yeah. Saturday was better. Uh, so I think if they play it better, like let's just say that was the low point Thursday. Now we're coming up right on the upswing. So Saturday was better. If it's even a little better on Monday, Robin, I have a hard time seeing how you don't beat the San Jose Sharks. You're right. I feel like that's kind of the, the thought process you should be having at this point uh, is, is Utah's been focusing on optimizing their roster with what they have. Like they still have their defensive woes. Don't get me wrong, and we're still going to experience that tonight. I have almost no doubt about that. Um, but for everything else, you know, this team can score, and we've we've already seen it, despite what Tuesday and Thursday shown. Um, but I, I I don't see how they 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 don't take this opportunity, especially again as we talked about. With this the, the the bigger skill level difference that we're talking about here, Ottawa was a team that we we're like, okay, that's a, a team that can that looks good and sometimes is really good, sometimes they're really bad. I don't know what kind of team they are. Colorado has always been one of the one of the top teams in the Central Division. It's a really tough division, and then going to LA, they're still in the upper half. You know, even I'd say a quarter of that uh, of the Pacific Division. And then you're going now coming back home and hosting the worst team in the league. You know, it's in the back of my mind, though. Admiral Akbar, Star Wars. It's a trap. I know, Robin, you said it's an opportunity game. It could be a trap game because hey, look, of everything we've just said. If you if you're watching on YouTube, you see I have that bullet point posted right there. Opportunity or trap. Because you're right, this can be a trap game. They because and, and okay, anyone, Robin. Any, actually, before we go into this, would you please explain to our our new folks, the everydayers probably know, but the new folks, what is a trap game? Oh God, uh, I I, mean, I, think, I feel like everyone I've talked to has a different definition. Um, for this one, I think to me, I think the best way to me is it's not it's a, a game in which a team looks as they could look as an opportunity. They see, oh, this is a team we can beat. These we can go X, Y, and Z, do what we normally do, maybe kind of settle things, but they don't they take it for granted. They take it for granted, and all of a sudden San Jose gives it their best, or the other or whatever other team gives it their best. And we're like, what just happened? We just lost this game and dropped a deuce take it for granted is a great way to explain it another way to explain it is to look past your opponent yes to write them off because you say they're oh seven and two there's no way we beat this team we'll go ahead we'll we'll show up at the delta center we'll get our two points our groceries and we're gonna go home and then we'll come back wednesday and that is exactly when you overlook a team when you look past the team that it becomes a trap game because that team shows up, puts in an effort, all of a sudden you lose, you know? So that's, that's when you're facing that classic trap because you're, you know, you're, you're looking past them, but here's the thing. I think if you're going well, you're more susceptible to a trap game than if you've lost three in a row. Yeah. If you've lost three in a row, you're on a losing skid. You're not taking anyone for granted right no. now because you've had teams from all parts of the standings beat you in the past week. You're right. And I feel like that's kind of the hope you'd, ex you would hope that that that's the case for this team. Um, there can be a situation where you could still consider it. And that's in that sense where they like, okay, we're on this losing streak. It's like, Oh, but we got this team. Like that's like, Oh, we 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 finally reached these guys. It's so it's here's here, here's here's an easy win for us. Let's get back on track. 
Right. Yeah. I mean, obviously, you would hope. You hope that... they don't look at it that way. You hope it's like, okay, this is an opportunity. We know what this team. We know this team isn't good, but let's let's press on the gas. Let's prove we are the better team. That's it. Put your foot down and go. You got to win. You got to get the points here. You got to get back on track, especially at home. Uh, I I told folks in the beginning of the year, and I'll, you'll hear me repeat it from time to time, but the old axiom, and it holds true, is if you win at home and you're a 500 team on the road, you'll make the playoffs. You know, now, or you'll be in the playoff mix, I think is more yeah. appropriate. I think you do have to learn to win on the road in order to be successful. But if you can at least get to 500 there and you take care of business at home, if you're winning two out of three at home, that's going to put you in. So uh, they need to get back to that as well at the Delta Center. It's it's not going to become a feared place to play all by itself. The fans can do everything they can do, but if you're losing three, four, nothing, eventually through no fault of their own, they end up sitting on their hands, you know? So it's up to Utah hockey club to give them something to cheer about at home. That's going to be important too. get that crowd into it. Get them into it early. Yep. You get, get you no know, repeat that kind of energy that you saw on opening night, right? You want to yes. bring that, make sure and, and just, keep going and keep going and keep going no matter what i feel like that's kind of what you want to experience um and i hope that's what we're kind of hearing happens tonight at the delta center uh, between utah and the sharks but we still got more to get to on this episode tom we're going to get to some keys to the game i'm going to ask you some some of that and i know you want to get to some defensive talk we're going to uh we'll kind of address that probably while we do that then we'll get to our picks of the game, get to what we think is going to happen, get through those fan duel odds, all of that coming up right after this. And today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks, the best place to get real money sports action. With over 10 million members and billions of dollars in awarded winnings, Prize Picks has made daily fantasy sports accessible to all. You just pick more or less on at least two players for a shot up to win up to 100 times your cash. Run your game all season long with prize picks. Prize, is, prize picks is the best way to get in action on all sports in 30 states, including California, Florida, Georgia, Texas, and even, of course, all of our listeners here. Yes, you can even get in on the action right from Utah. Prize picks is the best place to. Get real money action, sports action. They invented the flex play, which means you can still cash out if your lineup, but lineup isn't perfect. You can double your money even if one of your picks doesn't hit. I want you guys to check it out. You can sign up today and get a $50 bonus instantly when you play your first $5. You don't even need to win to get that $50 bonus. It's guaranteed. They offer weekly promotions that lead to big payouts like Taco Tuesday, Breach Tuesday, Price Picks. Discount select player projections up to 25% to provide even more value to your lineups. I've been using prize picks for the last couple weeks or so, and I've got a couple wins, and I'm already doubled, well, more than doubled my money. It feels really, really darn good. And it's making those lineups are just super easy. I've done a lot of hockey lineups, a lot of baseball lineups, basketball lineups, football lineups. I've done it all, and it's really easy. I Go ahead and check it out today. Download download the app and use the code locked on NHL to get fifty dollars instantly after you play your first five dollar lineup. Once again, that is the code L O C K E D O N N H L to get fifty dollars instantly after you place your first five dollar lineup. Prize picks run your game. So let's get to some keys, Tom. Utah versus the Sharks. And I and this is kind of kind of correlate with I know and kind of probably bring together with what I, what I know you want to talk a little bit about uh, with the you know with, with defense because I feel like that's going to be in, really heavily included in these keys to the game time. Yeah, well, I mean, you defense wins championships, right? That's me. That's how I approach a lot of sports. That's how I look at football. That's how I look at hockey. Uh, that's how I look at basketball. Uh, you know, if the other team can't score. You're probably going to win. Uh, and and there's a lot of ways to play defense, right? You can play in hockey. You can play great defense by being dominating on the offensive side of the puck. Tom, what the heck are you talking about? Listen to me. Hear me out. The Chicago Blackhawks, during their three-cup run era, 
and the Colorado Avalanche during their cup run had dominant offensive zone time numbers. They kept pucks in. They cycled. Their zone time was high. Their shot chances were high. And you know what? We only play the game with one puck on the ice. So if you've got it and it's 200 feet away from your net, odds are it's not going in. So if you're able to dominate offensively, you can take a load off your defense. And I think that Utah Hockey Club has the size and strength to be able to do that. They're still figuring it out, as we've seen in some of the early games. There are shifts where they look really good, but then there are shifts in some games where they haven't shown up, the effort wasn't there, Mm -hmm. and, and they get beat. So I think, yeah, that's a great place to start, but really to pull it back even further, Rob, and beyond defense for me it's effort yeah i need to see effort and i feel like the two i think you're right i think that the interesting thing is a word i was going to use and it actually to me brings these two together you know talking when it comes to that effort as well as that uh is to dominate the four check right because i feel like that's the most important you know to me that's a huge bit because they this is a team that should dominate the four check with its size, Bill Armstrong built that team for a reason. You know, he kind of to know that they, that's what they can do. They can easily bully their way down towards the net, keep in the offensive zone, keep that effort up, shoot, shoot the puck, crash the net, do whatever you can. Um, this team hasn't done that a whole lot of that yet. A lot of the team, a lot, a, a lot of these losses, I have not seen that. Fred Shero, the head coach of the Philadelphia Flyers, when they won their back-to-back cups in 75 and 76, uh, or 74 and 75, sorry. Uh, one of my favorite quotes ever in hockey comes from Fred Shero, and it was, take the shortest route to the puck and arrive in ill humor. So get there, get there as fast as you can, and play angry, physical, sour, this is my puck, don't you dare touch it, hockey. Obviously, the Philadelphia Flyers of the 1970s were very good at that. Uh, They were an aggressive team. You don't get a nickname, the Broad Street Bullies, for nothing. Right. That is the kind of team in a modern-day sense that Utah could be. Utah could be a team that has players looking over their shoulder. When the puck gets dumped in the corner, You don't want a guy going back to play the puck with confidence because he knows he's got time and space and he can start a regroup and then execute a breakout out of his own zone. You want him going back like this, trying to figure out where the guy is coming from. Yeah. And because he knows he's going to get labeled. I don't think there's been enough of that on opposing teams on regroups and dump ins. And, and, you know, no matter how you get it in, whether it's, whether it's a a hard uh, rim, whether it's a cross corner dump, whether it's a soft chip, However you put that puck in, you need puck pressure. You need puck pursuit. And you need to get in there and be angry about it and come out with the puck. And that's something that Utah needs to do more of because that's what leads to opportunities. That's what leads to goals. You're going to score goals off the rush, and that's fine. It happens, especially if you have an on-man rush. But... To really sustain winning culture in hockey, zone time, possession, cycle game, hard work, scoring opportunities. I mean, why is why do you think there's a reason? And I want to talk about, I want to go really in depth about this another episode, or you had maybe uh, a a short or something, Tom. And, and you and I have talked about this off the air. Um, ex- explain why that makes Corsi. You know, then everyone, if you've been a huge hockey fan for a long time. And all that, of course, the Fenwick and a lot of those advanced stats some of you guys may have heard of, why it's become so important to a lot of people. Because that's that's that shows you what the all that zone like it, it, it increases the the uh, the output of when you add in zone time and all that all that other aspects to know is this is this team do- c- controlling the possession? Are they dominating the puck? And a lot of times you can pretty much get a feel for that by watching the game too. Yeah, of course, very much eye test. You could do that yeah. so. You got to mix it all together, and then I really kind of help you help you understand that. Yes, yes. I uh, I have another point to make, but I'll tell you what. Uh, why don't we grab a break, and I'll come back. I'm going to to make my third point when we come back here in just a moment. 
And today's show is also brought to you in part by FanDuel. Get ready to tackle the NFL action with FanDuel America's number one sports book. Because right now, new customers can bet $5 and get $150 in bonus bets if you win. FanDuel Sportsbook app gives you everything you need to place live bets on the NFL all in one place. So when you get the hunch in the middle of a game, you can check out the latest stats. You can view the live play-by-play and so much more on the same page right where you place your bets. Just visit FanDuel.com to join today. You'll get started with $150 in bonus bets if you win your first $5 bet. That's FanDuel.com. Never waste a hunch and make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sportsbook partner of the NFL. And now, Robin, and by the way, thank you again, everybody, for the tremendous support we've had on this show. The everydayers, the newbies, everybody just coming in. We appreciate you being here. Thank you so much. Uh, And if you are just jumping on, you've heard about this Utah team now. It's been a month. We're at the end of October. It's almost Halloween. Happy Halloween, everybody. Um, You know, you might be saying, geez, you guys sound like you're being a little little fierce, maybe a little hypercritical. Um, And... You've got some comments I, about that. <laughs> we we have had some comments about that. And here's my response to that is, is some folks are like, well, you know, it, the fan perspective is you, the viewer, you, the listener. Yeah, That's not our job. Our job is to be as analytical as possible and to talk about what we see. And we have opinions, too. Sure, yeah. we do. And we root for these guys. And we're, you know, and, 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 and we're all varied. Like, sometimes you'll have a different opinion and I'll do. And we sometimes will we'll view at things from different perspectives. I think that's kind of the the beauty of all this. Yeah, Robin will tell me why I'm wrong. I just take it. You know, that's how it goes. So, but uh, but it, in all seriousness, <laughs> like the, so, the reason we do that, and we do it because we like to challenge the opinions too, right? Yeah. I, I want to hear from from your side of the view. So that's why you know you want to leave a comment, you want to reach out to us on social, you want to join our text club and send us stuff for the for the mailbag. All of those are valid ways to get in touch with us. We love to interact with you. But I want to hear from all the different opinions that are out there, too, because it does take a village for this. So, But, Robin, to get back to my my point here against San Jose coming up, um, you know, the other thing this team needs to do, and, boy, they did this a lot on Saturday and even more on Thursday, but it was still their Saturday. They're passing off good looks and high-percentage shots. They're deferring to a pass. And they did score what would have been a power play goal if it had been a second earlier. I thought it was a power play goal originally. It was not. It was one second too late, even strength goal. But it was just a it was a beautiful cross ice setup, one time rip, looks fantastic, awesome goal. But this team needs to funnel pucks to the net. They need to take those shots. Ugly hockey. You know, look at Logan Cooley's goal. He battles. Beats the defenseman in front, gains stick position, gets in there for the tip, and the puck that was thrown to the front of the net, he directs it home. Great goal. That's the kind of goal I'm looking for. And I see the guys still passing off those shots that they're in between the face-off dots. They're in the slot. It's a higher percentage shot, but they're still not taking the shot because they want that perfect pass. And my point on Twitter was, I don't want perfect. I want good enough. Yeah. It's good enough. The angle's good enough. Put it towards the net. Get a rebound. The angle's good enough. Get a deflection. The angle's good enough. Maybe it goes in with a screen. Or maybe your shot is good enough and it picks a corner. Or even shoot the puck. Or another thing is maybe the one that you were looking the pass to is smart enough to read that and they can go for the rebound. There's there's something they call the POP, the pass off pad. So when you're coming down one side of the ice, let's say you're coming down the left side and you have a player on the right side and a defenseman in between you, you can't get that puck over to him without the defenseman turning it over. So what do you do? You fire a low shot on the ice to the far low side. So if I'm coming down the left wing, I shoot for the far right corner. What does that do? That makes the goaltender kick out with his left pad to make a save and it forms a V effectively becoming a pass off the pad of the goaltender to the player on the other side of the ice. Now, if the goalie whiffs, if the shot is deflected, or maybe you surprise him, it goes in. There's nothing wrong with ever putting a puck on net, but there are ways 
to get the puck over there. And yeah, R- Robin, I need to see more of this. I need to see yeah. more pucks to the goal crease area. Shoot it. You're now, right. Don't I- don't hit the guy in the chest. Every goalie's got a quick chest. Yeah. But please put the puck at the net. Yeah, exactly. And I feel like you're you're right. And I think the other thing too is uh, a lot of it probably has to do with when we. And this is something we talked about. We talked about how young this team is. I think some of that youth is showing, right? Some of that yes. youth is some of that youth. What we see when it comes to a young team is they like is they tend to defer to the veterans. If let's say like a like a Logan Cooley or Matias Michelli is on the ice and they're like, oh, like I I mean I know I can shoot, but Clayton Keller is right here. I'm just gonna pass to Clayton Keller because I, I I trust I know he that I trust that he's gonna do the right thing. Um, again, I'm not in their head. I'm not saying that's exactly what they're saying, but it's almost what it feels like. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, I I understand sometimes the younger players feel like they have to pass to the older guy, you know, to for whatever reason they feel political pressure or whatever, for lack of a better term. Um, I just I, I and I don't think Utah's a culture that dictates that. No, I think no. they need they just need to get these younger guys, especially the very young guys, to buy in and say, you know what, if you're a shooter, shoot. I Put mean, the puck at the, the net. I mean, look at the beginning of the year. The first the first three games when we saw that just intense you know shoot, you know, uh shooting gallery we saw from uh from Dylan Gunther and the amount of goals he hit. Like, yeah, that's that was amazing for a young for this young guy like Dylan Gunther. That's what you want to see. Um, I want to see that from as many as we can. And I and I mentioned Matias Michelli. He's not the kind of guy that is instantly gonna gonna try to drive the net. I we I've made jokes in the past on this show. Every day is from years from from you know the last couple of seasons. No, I would make jokes about Matias Michelli accidentally passing it to the net. Um, right. he's a passer. That's what he does. But Honestly, I think he needs to get some confidence too and shoot the puck. Yeah, they they just need everybody to to jump in. I mean, total shots needs to happen. They need to increase that I, number by a lot. My hope is now that um, Nick Bukestag is coming is is like he's got he's got one game back under his belt. So let's see if he can get um, you know get some reps back in and kind of get back into uh, in into season mode. And I think he will be a positive impact on this team. Yeah. He brings a little bit of that with him. I like the grit, the sandpaper. I like Buke said coming back in. I, I just love that. And again, this is from previous years too, from, you know, the air, even some of the Arizona years is he'll get traded away, but he loves the organization. He loves the players. He'll sign back with them again over the off season. It's like, <laughs> yeah, I love that. And I'm like, good. Yeah. Piece, dude. Well, Robin, I know we're we're going late into the episode here, so I'm going to punt on my uh, defensive trade targets. Uh, we're going to punt that one down the line to a future show, but uh, I do have some trade targets, and I'll tell you why I think they are good or not good. So how's that for a tease? We're just not going to be able to pack it into the show because we've got to get to the odds. Yeah, we talk do got to that and make our picks yeah, here. Yeah, we'll do that. And why does that bring it up right now? And our odds powered by FanDuel Sportsbook, Utah Hockey Club. I think this is the biggest favorite we see, we've seen for a Utah HC game so far. Minus 255 at plus 205 for the San Jose Sharks uh, with total points at five and a half. Well, I've been wrong pretty much every time so far. Uh, I just, I am taking Utah in this one. Um, the money line is stiff. That's, like sharks plus two Oh five. You almost wouldn't be hurt by picking an upset. Uh, Cause they got to win at some point. Nobody loses every game. And you know, Utah's kind of been back and forth lately, but yeah. I just don't see them losing this one. Here's the thing over under Robin. Okay. I'm going to lay it out. Like I always do by going with the numbers and the stats. So the sharks goaltenders, here are the numbers, okay? Mackenzie Blackwood, five games, five starts, uh, 0, 3, and 2. So has those two overtime points. 3.88 goals against. So because those games have gone past regulation, that would otherwise pretty much be a 4. Um, 17 goals against, an 897 save percentage. So sub 900. 
165 shots against 148 saves. So 897. And then Vitek Vanacek, when they can spell his name right, even when they can't. Uh-huh. 0 and 4, 4.0, 869 save percentage, 18 goals against mm-hmm. uh, in those games. I just, Robin, those are bad numbers. Yeah. Those are bad save percentages. If those guys are pitching 910s, 915s on a team still letting in a lot of goals, I'm like, okay, well, obviously it's shot volume and the Sharks are, are bending and breaking. Yeah. That's a problem. But what I see right there is their goaltending hasn't been good. So if one of those guys puts in a good game, Utah really hasn't been scoring. The Sharks, I, I don't think, are going to have that much of a, a good time scoring. I think this is a low-scoring game. I think, I think it's think under. It's, I'm I'm with you. I think this is an under game. Uh, I, I personally will take the under. I will add one more. Uh, it's something that we don't post um, on the on the odds. I do mention every now and then. Uh, but Utah Hockey Club, this point spread for this one, the puck line, as as, as what it's uh, referred to as in a lot of other ways, is at minus one minus one point five. So they are goal and goal and a half favorite um, at plus one hundred four. Um, I'm almost inclined, if you're looking at an opportunity game for the Utah Hockey Club, that I'm going to take that points and give them the so have them like a win by two or more. Um, like, but still keep that under, I'm thinking maybe like about a three, one game here. Yeah. It's, and again, I mean, looking at the sharks really, I, I told you the top line earlier, uh, Grandland is their leading scorer it is a point of game guy, uh, 10 yeah. points in nine games to Foley's got seven and nine, but so the sharks on the year, those two guys have four goals each. Okay. So that's eight goals between them. The entire rest of the roster has 10 goals. So if you could shut down Granlin and Toffoli and they're on the same line, that to me spells low scoring. That to me spells victory. I think I just drew up the entire playbook for my, for the Monday night victory over San Jose at Delta Center. Yeah. You can thank me later. That's your final score. Um... You know what? I'm going to go this route. I am going to say uh, there's going to be a blanking in order. I think it's a 2 nothing Utah Hockey okay. Club win. Okay. The Sharks continue the tailspin. Doesn't I wouldn't I don't see I could I could see this happening. Um I think so you and I are around similar and very very similar. I think I just have look I just we just kind of shift the go- the goals up just by one where you say two, nothing. I'm going to say I'm three to one. I'm at least giving San Jose just one because I mean, I don't know. I, I almost never predict shutouts. <laughs> you feel like to and Granlin are going to break through or somebody else breaks through. It's going to be, something. it's going to be at least something. I it mean, we could be- say, we could say that about the last week for Utah hockey club. Well, it's going to be something. It's gotta be something, yeah. Uh, no, it, it's yeah. It, you you can see some some stupid stuff pass through sometimes. It's <laughs> yes, you can. That that's for sure. Uh, but that's why we love hockey, right? Because it's so stupid. <laughs> yes, but that would be my prop bet. I would bet on the blanking. I think uh, maybe this might be the one. You know, I think that would be an interesting bet. I'll have to take a look and see what that, um, what, what an odd for that might be. I, I, it's going it's to take a little bit of digging, so I'm not going to do that on the show. Um, but that's going to be it for this episode of the Locked On Utah Hockey Club podcast. If you like what you heard, don't forget to leave a review, like, comment, subscribe if you have yet to already. We are available everywhere you get your podcast, including on YouTube. I also, also highly recommend uh, you guys uh, go ahead and check out Locked On Sharks. Um, so to hear the other perspective, uh, J.D. Young, um, who does the show, he's been doing this show for a long time. It's a phenomenal job. Uh, and again, he's another he's another close friend of mine. Um, and he's so I think I highly recommend you guys uh, listen, listen in to to that show. But for us here, mercilessly booed in our comments last time. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I I heard you guys about 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 my other guy. Um, but again, 
He's still a close friend of mine. Not going to change. Not, not going to change anything about that one. Yeah. Um, just but, know what you, hey, you're going to the other team. You're getting the other perspective. Just be, yeah. You know, yeah, that's, it's, it's, it's good to hear the other side. It's good to hear the other side every now and then, but go ahead and check, go ahead and check him out. Um, like I said, he, he's been, JD has been working really hard on, on the lockdown sharks for the last five years or so. Uh, but for here on social media, don't forget to in, uh, to uh, follow us at LO underscore NHL Utah. I am personally at Robin underscore Leonio. Tom Callahan is at Callahan on air. And once again, also, don't forget to join the Answer the Text Club. Send us a text 801-760-9033. 801-760-9033. You can text us. Uh, really at any time when we're, uh, when you're a member of that text club and kind of ask us any question you want. And, uh, is I see, I, I tend to see them every day and I try to get my, I try to respond to as many as you can every day. And, uh, it's go check it out. The first 14 days will always be free. Um, if you don't like it, you don't have to stay with us, but we hope you do and stick with us as we get some exclusive content coming your way. Once again, thanks everyone for listening to this episode and we'll see you guys next time.